What's up everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are working on my Audi R8 and we're gonna do some cosmetic changes. I really wanna spruce up how this car looks. It's a great looking car, but we're gonna start off with painting the calipers because all of the R8s come with black calipers. So I want them to be a little bit more unique. We're gonna do all of the reflectors and the headlights with some tint. And then we're also going to add a stripe to mimic the rear wheel series Audi R8. So we already went ahead and worked on the passenger side just to get our bearings with this project. You can notice the change up front and here's a sneak peek at the passenger side tire. So the products that I'm using to paint my calipers is this Super Wrap sprayable vinyl. We actually stumbled upon this about a year or so ago and Brian's done this on his Supra and GTR and they seem to hold up very well. It looks like a professional paint job for around 30 to $50. You can do this in your driveway, you can change up your calipers and you can even remove this if you wanna go with a different color. Before we start cleaning my massive eight piston brake caliper here, I need to disassemble it. We're gonna be removing the brake pads so with this punch here, I can remove this upper pin and there's a spring just behind it. It's gonna be very similar on any caliper really, just the assembly might be a little different. So I can pull that out, that is the upper one. There's one on the lower section too. And then there's this bar that I have separating the upper pads and the lower pads. So this has an odd uh, socket to it there and I can go ahead and remove that. With those two bolts removed, now I can pop out this bar it's pretty interesting to see this. We've actually never really dealt with an eight piston caliper before. So once I get that out, we have the four brake pads. I have one more bolt to get to under here. And now it's time to start on the removal of the brake pads and we're gonna lay these on the ground so we know exactly where they go back in. With the calipers now disassembled, the rear is pretty much the same as the front, just not quite as big, so there's less pads of course. We're gonna go ahead and start cleaning these. So there's multiple stages that we're gonna do to clean these calipers. You just wanna use a normal cleaning solution. The kit also comes with one. This is gonna be towards our finer end of the cleaning stage. You can see I have this rag here. This is dirty from the other side. So this is just going to get the main uh, dirt and grime off and then we'll have three or four stages of cleaning it to get it nice and perfect. With a majority of all of the dirt off the caliper now, we're gonna go to the Q-tip method to get all of those hard to reach areas. So like around this ring here or even up underneath this bolt, you really wanna make sure that you get all of this dirt and grime out of those areas because the, the paint can start to peel if you don't get all of that dirt out of the way. So we're gonna be doing this multiple times to make sure that this is ready and prepped for paint. With everything taped up now, we're gonna do one last pass with our prep solution here, just to remove any grease, grime, or fingerprints, anything we may have missed with the cleaning solution just to get off all of that off as well. So it's been about an hour and a half to get to this stage here. You really wanna make sure that this is cleaned and ready to go. That way the paint will stick to all of the surface on your caliper and you won't have anything peeling or anything like that. So I'm gonna start off with the white base coat that this kit came with. Other kits may have a different color just depending on the color that you're going for. So I'm gonna start off with this base coat here and you wanna do very thin layers. You don't wanna to go too thick because you don't want any of it to run down the caliper. That's just not going to look as nice and we're gonna do as many coats as it takes in order to cover the entire surface. So it may vary depending on your car, but we're gonna go ahead and start here. So very light coats, and we're just gonna keep repeating this until it's entirely covered. The drying time for these coats is gonna be around five to 10 minutes, so once it dries, you can go ahead and move on to your next coat. So we have completed the base coat now. We did about seven coats, but again, it just depends on your full coverage. You wanna make sure you cannot see any of the factory color that you are trying to cover. So we're gonna do the exact same process now and start on the red. I'm very excited. This looks super good on the other side. So we're gonna do the same process starting off with the light coats and we're gonna do that until everything is covered, just like you saw us do with that base coat. We are all done with all of the red coats and it is looking great, especially against this white. It just pops really nicely. And if you saw in a previous video, I have red seatbelts now. So this is a great accent to those. So while these dry, before we undo all of this taping and all of the newspaper, we're gonna move on to my center caps now. And we figured out that we could pop off this plastic or this chrome plastic piece here. And this sprayable vinyl actually works on painted surfaces. It works on chrome painted surfaces. I don't think it works on raw plastic, but since these are chrome, we're gonna go ahead and match them to the red just to give it a great accent.
So as you can tell, we have the car back on the ground now and we went ahead and tinted the rear taillights and the side reflectors. We're gonna make our way to the front end now. Now, honestly, I really like the smoked out tint that I got, but it might be a little bit too dark for the headlights and the taillights. It looks really good on these side reflectors so we can hide that orange, but I will test these out later tonight just to make sure they are safe. You can see all the lights, of course, at nighttime, and I might change it to a lighter smoke, but for now, I'm just going to leave them this is a pretty easy process to do. We can knock this out in about five or 10 minutes or so. So we're just using light heat to get the vinyl to go into that crack surrounding the uh, reflector there. And then we also have our squeegee tool that we can use to kind of push it in there along with the razor knife that we'll use to make our final cut. So there are both of the headlights now done. As you saw on that quick time lapse, we had to use the heat gun a little bit more because this is a curved surface, but it's actually like working with vinyl. So it's really not all that hard to do. I'll have a link to this product down in the description as well, along with the smoked out tint, which like I said earlier, I may be changing it up, but I don't know, I kind of like it. What do you think, Bri? I'm 50-50. It's, it's a little dark uh, because as you guys know, the uh, R8 is iconic for the uh, running DRLs up underneath, basically the car that started that trend. And I'm kind of hiding that a little bit. So I might be taking away from the, uh, what do you mm -hmm. call it? The, the cool, uh, the, uh, the cool, yeah. The cool we'll play a clip right now showing it at night and you guys can let us know what you think. Yeah, so but, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, for now, I'm gonna keep it just because it matches the reflectors. On to what I think is my favorite part of today's project is adding this red stripe. As I mentioned earlier, this is going to mimic like the rear wheel series R8s that they only had for two or three years, I think. And they had that stripe running down the driver's side. So we're gonna line this up with basically the center of the steering wheel and the top of the gauge cluster there. And then of course go all the way back to the spoiler. So we have our piece cut to size. I'll have a link down in the description below to this piece as well, because as you can see, it already has the design. So we don't have to mess around with knifeless tape or anything like that. So unfortunately, this vinyl is not working like vinyl we've used in the past. We are getting a lot of air bubbles and there's just no way for those bubbles to escape like the, I guess, better vinyl that we've used before. So I do have some more. We're gonna try this stripe again. If it doesn't work, I'm not gonna be able to put the stripe on for today's video. I'll just have to do that in another video. For the meantime, unfortunately, we do have to peel this off. Actually, before I do that, what do you guys think? Do you like that stripe? I think it would look really cool going down the roof as well all the way to the back. So we'll try it again. If it doesn't work this time, we'll just have to do this again. But we'll go ahead and unfortunately rip this off. So round number two, you guys, and this is actually looking really good. So basically what we did is we tacked one side down while I held this side off the paint. And Brian went like you're vacuuming your rug all the way down, basically going, what, like a half inch or so at a time? Yeah, just slowly pushing the vinyl down like we do a pass, like getting that done. And then I would move here just to get another half inch down and then do the other way. So while he was doing that, I was holding it from touching the paint as he went all the way. And we made it all the way to the edge of the hood here with absolutely no bubbles. We so think. We think. We think. Yeah, we haven't peeled off that protective layer yet. But if this does work, I have enough to do the rear deck lid. I just have to order more for the roof, but that is looking pretty darn cool. I will say I love the look. <laughs> I think it looks fantastic. Yeah. So it's we'll, just, it's, it's good brand. It's name brand vinyl too. It's Oracle. So it should be good. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit thinner than what we're used to. So not to jinx it, but so far so good. It's coming off really nicely. We're keeping a low angle. That way we're not putting any pressure pulling it up. And uh, so far the first six or seven inches, it's getting there. Uh, we're just taking our time because I'm nervous about getting a big old bubble, but it is looking good. We are getting there. Any tiny little micro bubbles, which are super microscopic, that'll just come out with the sun's heat. So we are almost at the bottom. It is looking good. That is such a good looking stripe. So now we just got to do it really slowly and then we'll just have to by hand kind of get the edges all tucked. It's almost there. Oh, I saw the bubble. I was nervous, but that's off the paint. That's the edge. <laughs> yeah. So we can, we can tuck that away. Yeah. Sweet. So yeah, we won't, won't have a roof, but honestly, I don't even hate it if there was no roof. 
I'm just saying, that's I my know, opinion. We'll that's my If opinion. I do have a roof, follow us on Instagram. If I have a roof. <laughs> if I do do the roof piece, follow us on Instagram because we'll make updates, of course. And you guys can follow our day-to-day -day behind the scenes. All right, so let's cut that and uh, we'll get the rest all finished up. So we have a trick that we came up with to do the back since we're not doing the roof just yet. We have caution tape here that we're gonna use as the stripe in order to line this up. So I am basically right in the center, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna tape it. Oh yeah, how much do you need? That's good. Okay. So we're gonna have to tape it twice. So let me tape it here. And from what I can see, this is right in the center of the headrest, which is where it was uh, from the other side. Right here? Yeah. All right, so you do a double <laughs> check for me. That's yeah. actually very cool. Why don't we just do a caution stripe? You could have, honestly. How does that, how does that look? I mean, it, we're pretty, pretty much there. Does this yeah. need to go away from me at all? No, that's, that's about where right it's there. gonna be. Right yeah. There. Yeah. We're back now after a little bit of time off camera, finishing up the third brake light. We took off the R8 logo as well, which you'll see here soon. We also Plasti dipped the rear logo. And last up for this car is Plasti dipping the front logo. Now this entire project is 100% reversible. So if I decide to change up anything, I don't like the red, I don't like the stripe, or I don't like the Plasti dip, I can peel it all off. And so this is coat number one for the Plasti dip. Now Plasti dip can get a bad rep and I think it's just because people do it wrong. We've used Plasti dip before, it comes off, it pretty much kind of looks normal. If you has do a, it right, it doesn't look cheap, it looks normal. Yeah, it has a dark matte finish to it, so it'll match this car great. Uh, but when I do decide to wrap the car, I'm gonna peel the logos off, we'll paint them properly. Uh, so this is just quick and easy to get it done and out of the way. So the cool thing with Plasti Dip is, as long as you tape it up properly, you won't really get all that much overspray. You can see we kind of have a little bit here, but that's easily able to re be removed. And we put blankets down the entire hood here to uh, protect all of this paint. But you can already see, just peeling up the tape, how thick that coating is. You did, what, seven or eight coats, I think? Something like that. Somewhere around there. And it's going to be very easy to peel off this outer Plasti Dip. It's so cool to use because as you can see right now, and without having to use like a, a razor knife or anything, it's automatically going to peel off the logo just like that. I just have to keep it going. <laughs> How cool is that? So if you do it right, it looks, I mean, it may not look exactly like paint, but it still has a good finish to it. It'll look similar to this plastic right here. So it pretty much blends yeah. in with what it should look like. There we have it, basically a complete overhaul on the Audi R8 and I think it looks really good. So the last piece of the puzzle is to put in the last center cap with the red and we have them to where the logo aligns with the stem cap. So we're gonna put it in right about like that all right oh and on a side note i don't have my r8 logos in yet to go on the brake calipers there but i'm basically going for the factory look so once those are in follow us on instagram again so we, you can see those on along with the stripe for the roof because that is going to look really good but just a quick walk around we have the stripe up front what do you guys think for a stock wheel that actually looks really nice i love the combo that was a last minute decision to do the ring around the center cap there and then we also have the Plasti Dip logos. I don't think they saw the rear one yet. R8 was right here, so we removed that just to clean it up a little bit. That's gonna wrap it up for today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. That was, what, 12 hour process? Yeah, I think it took yesterday. Us, uh, two days, yeah, including today. Uh, but if you just wanna do one of these, it really won't take all that long. So it's definitely a cool way to change up the look. This almost looks like a second gen R8 now. <laughs> so I love it. But that's gonna wrap it up for today's video. Give it a huge thumbs up for all the hard work that we put in for today's video. Consider smashing that subscribe button if you wanna stay up to date on our latest uploads. We'll see you guys in the next video.